Hi everyone, today I'm going to continue on with uh, my long running films of 1972, 50 years ago. I've done about 30 videos, I think, on 1972 movies, and I've sort of uh, put them into genre categories so you can sort of compare westerns to other westerns of 72. But this, this, uh, this section is going to be on crime movies, and I'm going to do six crime movies. Uh, inclu inc besides the one I'm going to talk about today, I'm also going to talk about Sam Peckinpah's The Getaway, Steve McQueen and Ally McGraw. You can watch Steve McQueen and Ally McGraw fall in love on screen <laughs> and, in, and in real life. Uh, and then uh, Fuzz, this is from an Ed McBain, uh, 87 Street Pre 87 Precinct uh, uh, comedy crime movie with just an outrageous cover there. I love the cover. Uh, and then we have a more somber uh, crime film, Jean-Pierre Melville's Un Flick, A Cop, with Alan Delon, Richard Crenna, Catherine Deneuve. Uh, Alan Delon is, is the flick in this movie. He's not the bad guy. He's the good guy. He's the cop. Uh, and then um, The New Centurions. Uh, this is another... Uh, police-centered drama uh, with George C. Scott, Stacey Keach. It's from a novel by Joseph Wambaugh, and here, here is that novel. I'm going. To, I'm starting to read this novel today. It's uh, one of these old mass market, really tiny paperback uh, copies, and uh, um, I've read some other Wambaugh movies. He was, yeah, he was a, a police officer, and and that, that is the subject matter of all his. Uh, novels, The Onion Field. I know I read this, that one. I don't believe I read The New Centurions, and I will be, um, I will be linking books to movies uh, in the future whenever, whenever possible, or where I can get a hold of the source material. And then the other, the last of the films is a little uh, obscure movie, uh, a crime movie called The Godfather. But today I'm going to talk about um, a, uh, film called uh, Across 110th Street, and it's directed by uh, Barry Shear, starring uh, Yapit Kodo and Anthony Quinn. I don't have it on Blu-ray. Uh, this is, I, I wanted to get this, uh, hopefully that'll come into focus. I guess it's not gonna, maybe there. Uh, it has a great tagline on the cover. If you steal $300,000 from the mob, it's not robbery, it's suicide. <laughs> and that pretty much sums up uh, across 110th Street. And again, this is uh, Yafid Kodo and uh, Anthony Quinn, who are the police detectives in this film. And uh, I had to stream this. I, I think Kino had a version out that's out of print. My library system, which is like 40, 40, 40 branches strong in this countywide uh, library system, none of them had even an old DVD of Across 110th Street. So the prices on the marketplace are uh, much too high to pay. And some uh, in uh, Across 110th Street uh, is is often um, is often put into the category of black exploitation. It does. It does, <laughs> almost all the scenes are set in Harlem. And it has, it opens with the credits of Bobby Womack's song called Across 110th Street, which was, I think, a fairly uh, good hit record at the time. Uh, and, <clears throat> and it has a funky score. And, and the Bobby Womack song uh, was uh, used by Quentin Tarantino in, in, uh, in Jackie Brown. Um, and it open, the opening scenes sort of really sets the tone for this very violent, <laughs> gritty movie where we see uh, what appear to be three black mobsters and two white mobsters in an apartment, and they're changing money, um, a lot of money, 300, as it turns out, $300,000, which is worth about $2 million. I think I looked it up, $2 million today. Uh, and so the black mo uh, mafia, and we're in Harlem, is, uh, is still got to pay its allegiance to the mafia, the downtown mafia. And uh, knock on the door, policemen there, they try to pay them off, but these aren't real policemen. These are, these are two robbers. And one of the robbers has a machine gun, so the carnage begins. 
uh, it, it's a very jittery scene as they sort of face off and, and against each other, and it is indicative of what the film is. It's a very jittery movie. In this scene, one of the white mobsters is played by Burt Young. I can't remember whether he has a line of dialogue in this film before his demise. I, I think he grunts a couple times. Of course, this is Burt Young before the Rocky days. Um, so then the rest of the plot is the tracking down of these, uh, of these robbers by the mafia and also by the police. So, uh, there's a lot of dualities in this movie. 110th Street being the dividing line where the black mafia is, is controls the, the rackets with paying allegiance to the white mafia that's below 110th Street. So 110th Street, I believe, is the northernmost border of Central Park in New York. And um, uh, the, all, the, the whole film was filmed on location in Harlem in 1972. And that's quite an achievement <laughs> to film any film in 1972 in New York. Well, it was was a big time headache, uh, but they and especially doing it in Harlem, uh, and uh, they could only do it because they were using a brand new camera, Aeroflex camera that was uh, was sort of portable, so it it could attach to the to the camera operator's shoulder. So not only were all the exteriors shot, uh, so were the interiors. And, and uh, so we get this in, in these decaying tenements, so we get this very feeling of claustrophobia, of fear, uh, of hopelessness. Um, it's a city, New York in general, not just Harlem, in New York City, like many major American cities in 1972, it was falling apart. Uh, and in Harlem, we see the bombed out storefronts um, from the, uh, the riots that followed Martin Luther King's assassination. Uh, the empty tenements just crumbling away, uh, occupancy, middle-class blacks leaving Harlem because of all the uh, crime and drugs. Um, and the film is also, despite this authentic location uh, uh, shooting that the film, uh, which is really as depressing as it looks, it, it really is a great historical artifact of, of the times. The storyline follows male, as so many movies in 1972, it follows a male-centric, male panic situation. Um, so in the mob uh, scenes, Tony Franciosa becomes the enforcer, but when he's given the job, it's he's the son-in-law of the local Don who rules the Harlem mobs. And uh, But he evidently, we get the feeling that he hasn't been very successful whenever he does. <laughs> that the, so he's given like, this is your last chance to really prove yourself. And he's a sadistic, uh, neurotic bully. Uh, I mean, the, the uh, torture scenes here are really tough to take. And, uh, and so, and, and then amongst the, the cops, we have Anthony Quinn. Now, he's an aging uh, police uh, detective. Uh, he's 55. He's, he's been given the whispers that they want you out. He doesn't get put in charge of this case, this murder robbery case. Um, a lieutenant, a black lieutenant, gets, gets the nod to, to lead this, uh, this, this investigation in this pursuit of the criminals. And of course, Anthony Quinn, he doesn't take this too kindly, but we also, and, and so he's, he's in a sense of panic too. What am I going to do? This has been my life for 30 years and now they want me out and now they put a new younger man in, in place of the lead investigator. And then Quinn has, has, has a, uh, he just beats up everybody, the suspects, the witnesses, and Yafed Koto playing the young, uh, wet behind the ears, uh, in Anthony Quinn's view, he, he tells him, you know, knock it off, knock it off. And then Quinn does, but then he gets, he gets, he gets so angry. He said, how are you going to get results? You can't get results like that. And Coda say, you know, tells him, you know, these are different times. And, and, uh, uh, and Quinn goes off, you know, I, I'm tired of this liberal bullshit. <laughs> it doesn't work. We're modeling coddling the courts. Now you want to model coddling criminals as well. 
And law and order, like I say, was a big, big topic, a political issue. I think the main uh, issue that Richard Nixon ran on for president in 1972 was law and order, and politicians picked it up everywhere, the crime in the cities, crime in the suburbs. Um, we had to get tough on crime. So uh, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is certainly, whatever you might think of the movie, <laughs> this is certainly a, a, uh, a picture of 1972. Now, it, it might be a very nihilistic picture of 1972 because your, your attitude by the end of the film is, why don't we just knock everything down and start over again? The supporting performances are really good. Uh, there's, there's, there's a great uh, supporting cast here. Uh, under the direction of Barry Shear, who was basically a TV director. He did, he, I think his only previous feature film, theatrical film was uh, Wild in the Streets, it was a really crazy film as well. Um, and so there's a lot of TV actors that you're going to see, you know, throughout the film, but they're good. TV actors and the actors weren't good. I particularly liked Richard Ward, who plays Doc Johnson. He is the kingpin of the Black Mafia. And he's sick and tired of having to pay this obeisance to the, to the Italian uh, Mafia. And he has two scenes, again, a, a sort of dual scenes where Anthony Franciosa, coming from downtown to uh, lord it over what a man who believes he is the king of his territory. And he's just, uh, Richard, uh, Ward is just great. He, he, uh, he just totally emasculates Franciosa, infuriates him, and really pushes him to more sadistic uh, behavior as he confronts the the, uh, the 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 people who who have committed this this these crimes and stolen their the mafia's money. But then there's the other scene where Anthony Quinn comes to confront him and, and say, you know, lay off, uh, you know, let us do our job and. He tries to lord it over Doc Johnson, and again, he's just humiliated by uh, in front of the Affleck Coto. Uh, so it's a and Richard Ward. I, I looked him up, and he had been a prize fighter and for ten years a detective in the New York City uh, Police Department uh, before becoming an actor. So you know he knows he he knows the territory here, and really I think it lends very much to the. Um, the, uh, the overall authenticity, especially of his scenes. These are really good scenes. Whatever else you think about the movie, as far as the violence goes, there are some pretty good scenes, and, and certainly the, the two I've just described are, are like that. And so we have Yafet Koto very early in his career, maybe his second, second or third. I know he was in The Liberation of L.B. Jones and maybe a couple of others, but he was soon to be in a James Bond movie, <laughs> Live and Let Die. Uh, one of the Roger Moore James Bonds, as was the lead female actress. It's a small role, Gla Gloria Hendry. She also played in, in Live and Let Die. So we have uh, a movie that the violence is, is, is definitely, it's disturbing. And I'm reading some of the contemporary uh, uh, reviews. It was, you know, lots of walkouts, people just not, you know, digging this level of violence. And the reviews were uniformly bad, although the film commercially didn't do that bad. Uh, it wasn't a big hit, but it certainly got its cost back and made a little bit of money. But uh, as far as the, re the contemporary Arbor reviews from our time, it seems to have been reevaluated upwards in, uh, in, in critical estimations. And it certainly has a movie with, with a lot of momentum, momentum to it. Uh, and the final shootout is very well done. It's like a rooftop shootout that culminates in a really great moment, ironic moment. Uh, but like I say, it's not on Blu-ray anymore, at least in the U.S. Um, <clears throat> but it was on, I had watched it on the Criterion channel, uh, but it left the channel July 31st, uh, which was yesterday. But it's part of, uh, uh, in August, uh, their the Criterion Channel has a Yafet Koto curated section um, of other films that Koto was in. And it, the little asterisk that across 110th Street is coming back to the Criterion Channel September 1st. I don't know how streaming rights go, but I guess they have to drop it for a month. Um, so uh, that'll wrap it up uh, for, for across 110th Street uh, and uh, 
thanks for everybody who managed to listen to me uh, to the to the end, the bitter <laughs> violin end. Uh, any all comments are welcome. Uh, take care.